Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, uh, usually when I'm discussing, I like to disagree with some of the presenters. It, this is going to be difficult because I pretty much agree with everything I heard. Plus, Andrew has given me these 15 minutes to reflect. Again, I usually like to react <laughs> on the spot. And now, so that makes my task even more difficult. So I was trying to come up with something that could summarize what we've heard uh, right now by in, in these uh, three uh, very good uh, presentations, but also kind of uh, link up a little bit the yesterday discussion and with Philip's sort of uh, summary of the day. Um, kept coming back with this idea of the pendulum. So, uh, and, and we've been discussing these things coming from one orthodoxy, and I think uh, Philip put it uh, quite nicely, the risk that we're really going to the opposite, creating an anti sort of orthodoxy. And, and, and the pendulum again is moving. And I'm kind of glad that sort of Matt came back with this concept of kind of hybrid reform or bricolage he's been written uh, about uh, for quite some time. Uh, so again, I'll try to sort of break down a little bit in a few, <coughs> in a few kind of pieces and issues to kind of stimulate the discussion, but clearly uh, uh, I rely clearly on the audience to come up with uh, other sort of questions for, for our speakers. Um, so again, pendulum is kind of going back and forth. So, so there's all be discussion going back to the basics. Uh, I was part of the group within the PIFA Secretariat that had these endless discussions on on the basics and the optimal sequencing on reforms, which in the end produced papers by Jack Diamond and Dial Tomasi. These are all people that you know, and Richard Allen was part of that discussion. Uh, I found that discussion not terribly exciting, to be honest, uh, <laughs> because we went back and forth, uh, and in the end, we kind of sort of agreed to disagree. We come up with something was a little bit fluffy, because basics is another concept that is contextual in the way. It really depends where you go, where you move the situation that you find, the political system. So this whole idea to define what the basics, and even I remember Alan said, you know, we should change the world, call it foundations. It gets into semantics. I'm not sure it really helps. But really, we, we went back, we, we went going again, the pendulum, back and forth, trying to define something which I really question where I can actually be defined. And then we come with the so-called optimal sequence. So not too many years ago, we were kind of doing platforms, <coughs> trying to define exactly what the benchmark or, or the liberal was supposed to be kind of five years from now. We, we, we all know, but we, we don't know. We're pretty good at preparing this project document. I hope there are no donors in the room, but I mean, those <laughs> that basically fund our activities, they, they, they ask her for all these projects that laying out exactly all the risk factors <laughs> three, five years out, and simply we don't know. But we're pretty good at preparing this, 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 this document. So they're really quite convincing. So again, that's sort of point number one. So what is the entry point, the basics? Now, I tend to agree with, with, with Matt, although I really like to disagree, to be honest, every <laughs> now and then with Matt. And we have to look at the problems. Now, but even here, let's not go from one extreme to the next. Let's not go from a kind of best practice blueprint, you shall be uh, New Zealand or getting to Denmark, like, you know, uh, land preacher sort of favorite uh, uh, expression. And again, let's start to break down a little bit what the problems are. I mean, how many times have been uh, called by countries or received delegation in Washington, we want you to come with the team, this is the problem. Then we fly out, we arrive, spend a few days to realize that was not exactly the problem that was identified by either the minister or the budget director, but there were other problems. Problems tend to kind of materialize and become visible because there is a crisis, because there's a headlines or something, and, and, and then there's always some sort of sense of firefighting. This, this came clear in Tim's uh, and, and Amal's presentation. You know, typically, means of finance, they're always, and Ken made the point, yes, they're always an emergency, every single day, no exceptions. And this tends to kind of drive the quick fix, the solutions. Help your minister face parliament or the budget committee come up with a quick fix. So again, problems driven, yes, but there are problems and problems. You really have to find out exactly what the problems are. Uh, 
let's let's go back to sort of my sort of uh, examples. Books are not delivered. I, I can think of about 20 different reasons, going back all the way back to the chain to the fact that the badge was poorly prepared. Now, is that the procurement problem? Is that a cash management problem? It's just a logistics problem. Simply that no sort of vans or something to transport physically the books and so on and so forth. So it really requires a little bit of work. Matt is absolutely right. If you talk to the people that are involved, they can silly break down the problems for you because they're the guys that usually are on the ground and they can really break it down for you. Problem is they operate in silos. So one, one of the measures of my success when I go out with the team in a mission is usually and I think Matt uh, or, or team uh, use this expression of the sort of the trusted advisors, uh, convening all the kind of relevant people around the table. I mean, how many times I felt, okay, mission is accomplished. These guys are all in the room. I can leave the room, get the flight back to Washington. Mission accomplished because these guys they have all the information they have all the brain power, they know the countries, they know the political system. My contribution is going to be minimal, if not zero. Clearly, sort of exaggerating a little bit the point. But that's really, believe me, what happens just connect these various agents and actors. <coughs> and then it goes back to the idea of the champions. That's exactly the, the, the place where you can actually find the various champions through the chain. They can analyze the solutions. And that's the same place to, again, link back to yesterday, where you find your rising stars. And goes back to the issue we were discussing yesterday, again, the pendulum, the HR. Usually, we live in, this, including international institutions, they're all about, I think Bjorn made the point yesterday, about control and risk aversion, meaning nobody, there is a risk element if you try to put a new idea on the table. So you have to try to create that sort of environment, kind of protected to the extent possible. So can people actually speak up, point to problems, problems that you know may not be as visible, because again, it goes back to the idea, if you stick to the media problem, it may not be the real one. It's the one that hit the headlines that particular day. Again, it's the crisis point. In crisis, we come up with, with drastic solutions, quick fix, that are not gonna help uh, uh, in the medium to long term. Hopefully they would, but you know, Traditionally, it's very difficult. So that's that's one point. Again, it goes back also a little bit of what Tim uh, was saying in terms of identify who the reformers are. So this is a kind of exercise. Again, you start with the problem, but you really figure out what's behind that particular problem. And again, in my experience, they're always more sort of systematic or structural issues that may not be immediately visible, and that's where the role of a sort of hopefully trusted advisor, but the trusted advisor also has to be a bit of a Davis advocate. Um, people will say, okay, it comes with my job, clearly. Working with the IMF, that's what I do for a living. But I, I think it's honesty. Sometimes you really have to bear up bad news, and you say, dear Mr. Minister, the real fact that books are not <laughs> delivered is because, and then you go through the what you found. And, and that, that you really have to be very, very honest. And sometimes, again, goes back to the HR, the incentive structure within international institutions and with the donors, it, it really doesn't put a premium sometimes to be too honest. <coughs> Let's go back again. Uh, 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 how do we do this and where do we do it? It goes back to the role of diagnostic. Uh, uh, Amal had this very nice things on uh, Morocco uh, and the various sort of diagnostic the last 10 years. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there were quite a few missing. In fact, there was yes, nothing. There, <laughs> there was something from the IMF that wasn't there. So, um, sorry for that. my 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 <laughs> sense, my when sense is uh, uh, countries are overdiagnosed. Um, but these diagnostics they they suffer from various problems. It's like you know you go you have problem you go to a doctor blood pressure. Fine. Anybody can read blood pressures. I don't need to go to a doctor. Now, I need somebody to actually read what's behind that. And then ask me to do further analysis. If needed, go to a specialist. Uh, these diagnostics suffer from various things. It's an input 
first input. But sometimes I, I really wonder where it's really necessary because this technology has become something different from what they were originally created. They become sort of fiduciary assessment, things that haven't really been designed to do that. It's a kind of quick check. And they have all this math says, they have this kind of best practice bias. We're comparing ourselves to whom, on what. So again, I don't want to discard this whole thing. They're useful. It's like using a little bit macro model. We all know they give you not that they're not going to give you the right answer, but there's a lot of discipline. You have to go through the motion. You have to really <coughs> understand what's behind and analyze. Uh, how often times you have this PIFA report, some better than others, but it's fairly thick. There's a lot of information. People simply don't read. They look at the table and they look whether the country has an A or a B plus or a C plus, and that's it. And same with any sort of any ranking or ratings, whatever. Interestingly enough, if you write, if you read the papers of those who actually design, and, and I'm, I'm guilty, by the way, because I've been part of that uh, myself, uh, we all have a long list of caveats on the methodology, on the data sources. Uh, so I think we're pretty good at that. Probably nobody reads that stuff. They just want to show whether the country is a triple A or a triple B or whatever. So again, that's I think in this community we certainly need to do a little bit more, put out again some more kind of health warning <coughs> on that. Um, the point that Matt said again, it goes back to this problem. You have you have to try to build a problem, in a way. So go behind behind this sort of kind of the, vis the immediate visibility, so that really make sure that no sort of it's not in sort of skeletons in the, in, in the closet, so to speak. And then it goes back to his point. Then, 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 then you want to sort of build a strategy, identify the people you can work with. Another element to go back to sort of my, my, my job, that usually it gives me quite a bit of a sort of indication whether a particular country is serious about something. You want to have the so-called wrap-up meeting. Some of you have been exposed to that, perhaps sitting on the other side. And sometimes I have the wrap-up meeting and there's only the minister in the room. It's not a good sign. <laughs> Usually it works when I have the minister, the permanent secretary or whoever, and that most of the technical people have meet. Then, then, then you know that you can work. It goes back to the champions throughout the chains. And if the meeting is open, everybody can intervene. So that, again, is one of those kind of quick check that tells me whether, you know, again, we have identified the right problem, the right issue, we have <coughs> reflected everybody's views, they certainly have a chance to get back to us and tell us these are the solutions, this is the way we see it, and throughout the chains, everybody is, ga is, 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 is engaged. Uh, as Matt was saying, you need this throughout the chain. Clearly, the minister or permanent secretary or whoever gives the authority, the political backing, the motivation, but then the work needs to get done by people down the chain. And possibly not exclusively within the Minister of Finance, but in the line ministries, local levels, and so on and so forth. Uh, so again, we, we go back sort of to the depend who's in the driver's seat, what is the role of the external advisor, how sort of internal or domestic the, this, this agenda, sort of this sort of problem identification and sort of listing of possible solutions. Again, you go back to the hybrid, so this we keep kind of moving back and forth. And, and the pendulum, it gives you this kind of blurred image in a way. You, you, it's, a, it's a moving target by definition. So the idea of having sort of the magic tool, the magic diagnostic, the magic me me methodology that they can actually fix and sort of so that the pendulum can stand still, I think is a bit of an optical illusion we've been sort of perhaps pursuing. And Matt is absolutely right. We keep sort of I've been part of these groups and with many of you have been sort of having this conversation for the last 10 years at least. And we can sort of kind of keep repeating these things. And Matt is right, again, it's the pendulum. How can you so make sure that there is a feedback in what we do so that whatever is discussed in these rooms and in endless conversations in the field, in Washington and, uh, and anywhere else um, around the globe, actually sort of started to make a little bit of a difference. I mean, I've seen a little bit of a difference, but the pace of change is, is, is awfully slow. I've seen that in my institution to some extent, clearly talking to uh, people in the bank. But even if you look at the literature, things are moving 
sort of quite slowly. We still have this silos mentality I was discussing yesterday with some of you and even this morning with, with, with Matt very briefly. We have this public administration, public policy, uh, uh, public financial management, the economist's view, the accountant's views, the lawyers are always sort of a little bit like parsley, they're always spread all over. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, how can you sort of bring this, because things are really complex, uh, they're interdisciplinary by definition, and, and, and the point that came out a little bit yesterday, perhaps I'm not sure how sort of loud and clear, but something I usually uh, try to, to say uh, wherever I have the opportunity to speak, it's, there's nothing technical in this business. So this whole idea that there are non-technical factors and political economy factors, I think is another illusion. Everything is, in the end, has to do with politics. Public financial management is about allocating, uh, somebody put the Will Lasky sort of <coughs> definition on the screen yesterday. It's about allocating sort of scarce resources to meet certain sort of objectives. So again, the simple disclosure of information through a very sort of technical budget reclassification <laughs> exercise, I mean, draws in sort of a political elements that perhaps we, we tend to overlook or, or we assume, oh, this has been dealt by somebody else. As Philip said, we're gonna have another sort of round of papers on the political economy of. It's part of that, it's, blend, it's blended within what we do. So creating the illusion that these are issues that are gonna be solved or stapled on top of our technical solution, again, it doesn't work that way. So this is something we should try to read. And again, we have to, have to admit, these are things that perhaps we may not have the right expertise. So by all means, have the right people when we go out in team or where again, if we really want to be <coughs> play the role of the uh, trusted advisor or honest broker, whichever expression you want to do, you have to make sure that you have the right expertise. So that every sort of problem is being explored by all the various angles. Uh, let me just conclude at this point because I really look forward to, to the discussion and questions. Uh, uh, again, something that came up uh, yesterday, uh, I think Jana put that on the th clearly for all of us, but then other people speak on that. Okay, DHR, that's another example, you know, we do <coughs> technical stuff on PFM, we do the accounting, we do the budget preparation, we do the MTEF, and we are not really concerned with DHR. How many reports, how many times we go, you have to set up a macro fiscal unit, you have to set up a large taxpayers office, etc. Does the country have the capacity and capability actually to have the right people to do that particular job. Can they actually be hired within the civil service pay scale or not? Or do we have the usual ad hoc -ish sort of mechanism, people seconded by other institutions, including bilateral donors or international institutions, pay that, you know, multiple factor over the average salaries, creating all sort of sanctions. These are real problems that usually we assume is the usual economies let's assume we have a can opener. It's gonna be solved. So, and then, and then again, it goes back to this pendulum again, form over substance. You shall have a macro fiscal unit, decree regulation, <coughs> a nice new office, a door that says macro fiscal unit. You open the door and it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> but the conditionality or whatever trigger point we would have has been met. So the unit is up and running. Again, we should not, Pendulum, once again, not overemphasize form or function. But these things have to go to blend together and reflect the context. I mean, again, if you go to Austria or Germany, whatever, if it's not in the law or if it's not in the constitution, it doesn't exist. And you go to other culture, it's just, you don't really need that. So things is more a matter of practice or Common law, etc. So let me let me close at that point. Uh, again, um, I really enjoyed this presentation, and I look forward. And thank you once again for inviting me, and I'll look forward to the discussion. Thank you. <laughs>